So here I want to share a few more thoughts on uh, the issue of growth. Uh, the question here is, what are the sources of growth in this uh, baseline neoclassical growth model? Where does growth come from? And uh, we have a, a few uh, candidate answers. You see here, the, we have here a diagram that describes the model. And uh, the first candidate might be simply capital accumulation. Increases in K. Can increases in K sustain growth? So assume that you know we are at a K0 right here. And then, uh, as we've outlined, all well, there's positive net investment, uh, so that gross investment is larger than, uh, so here, gross investment is larger than depreciation, so there's a net increase in investment. And uh, we're moving towards the right, so that uh, until we are at this steady state, growth is driven by capital accumulation. Now, the problem with that is of course that uh, not only this might take a long time uh, but as well that this here is small so the increase in y becomes increasingly smaller the closer you get to the steady state or the further out towards the right you get because of decreasing returns so drs decreasing returns to scale becomes an issue here time is an issue Let's just hold it uh, in this very brief form here. Okay, let me clean this up, clean up our diagram here. So second, what's another candidate? Well, suppose that we already are at the steady state. So we are at this point, we're at K star. Then what can we do to increase, uh, to increase income per capita? A candidate might be to increase the savings propensity. What happens when we increase the savings propensity? Well, this function S f of k shifts upwards and we now have a S2, so that would be S1 and S2 f of k. And we have a new steady state to which we can uh, slowly adjust. So here's a k star 1, k star 2, and correspondingly, we have a y star 1 and a y star 2. Now, uh, the question here is, of course, similarly to the previous uh, question about capital accumulation, how long does this adjustment to the, to the uh, new steady state take, and how large is this? So there are similar issues with with simply increasing the savings propensity. But there is, uh, oh, let me just make a dot, dot, dot. But there is a different issue that, that is possibly more important. And that is uh, what will lead us towards this issue of golden rule growth. Namely, what are we really after? What are we really after? Uh, are we about, are we after income per capita? or are we possibly after consumption per capita? Is not consumption per capita the measure that tells us how well we're doing? What does it help us if we have uh, factories and factories of machines, so to speak, or factories of factories of servers and computers, if you want, but little bread on the table? So the factories are worth something to us, the server farms are worth something to us only if it increases consumption per capita. That's relevant here because you notice that we can, in this diagram, quite clearly speak to what per capita consumption is. Let's do that in green. Per capita consumption, if we're assuming here the foreign sector and the government essentially a way for simplicity per capita consumption is just a difference between these two lines uh, this is gross investment per capita okay so this is i over n and then uh, that section here is net whereas this here this is depreciation 
and so this is net investment per capita now what's the remainder well from y equal to c plus i without a government and uh, a foreign sector we have this part on the top the difference between the production function and the investment function as c divided by n consumption per capita how big is this well the question is relevant if we consider to increase s in order to increase growth you see that the higher we push up the higher we push up the savings propensity the closer we get to the production line so intuitively it's quite clear that by pushing up the savings by pushing up the investment rate with decreasing the consumption rate so we will now in, in just a moment we'll we'll investigate that and, and we'll actually show that there's a golden rule level of savings that guarantees the maximum per capita consumption third though and that I want to add that just here we're not going to talk about that now but the, the answer to the question ultimately is in this type of model is technology so it is uh, factors that uh, shift the production function itself upwards so that would give us technological innovation uh, technological progress will affect the underlying FK L and shift it upwards or as you can see in later chapters we will write FKA of L where A is what's called labor augmenting technological progress but I don't want to get to that ultimately in this type of model that technology is the answer but uh, even then we can talk about golden rule uh, level of savings that guarantees maximum per capita consumption so that's that's what I want to show on the next page so to do that mm, let me just redraw the diagram and very intuitively show why K show where this maximum uh, consumption per capita is so uh, let's do it like this so we have here production production f of k and that's income per capita and here we have depreciation per capita now so the question is what level of what s would you choose if you could do that what is the optimal level of savings if you could do that so I'm not drawing the s function in here but I want to ask you can you figure out uh, what is the optimal level of savings or what's the optimal level of investment that namely maximizes consumption per capita the answer to that is quite straightforward well we'll take this the slope of this we'll take this line the slope of which is Delta and push it upward and push it upward until we have a point of tangency now this is always a bit tricky to draw I hope that I can do that reasonably well right now that's not too bad so here we have a point of tangency where in fact the the slope of the depreciation line is equal to the slope at this point of the production function and at this point the distance between the two is maximized the distance between the two is of course consumption per capita if s is at this point so if we draw if we could choose s such that we would get down here we would get exactly to this point for a steady state then at this point steady state consumption per capita is maximized because the distance between delta k or s of fk and fk is maximized so uh, you'll know as well that dy dk or uh, 
df dk, so the derivative here is equal to the marginal product of capital mpk uh, in terms of calculus. So that that is the slope of this line. So the the uh, maximum per capita consumption uh, is occurs when in the marginal product of capital marginal product of capital is equal to the depreciation rate. Okay, so uh, that is the simple answer, uh, graphically quite intuitive uh, to show. Uh, I want to add to it uh, a couple other points. I'll go to uh, the next page. You see here that I have uh, a diagram that kind of shows that uh, the same thing that, that uh, we just developed, namely a steady state at which steady state consumption per capita is maximized. So C star by N is maximized at this K star because the distance between the savings function and the production function is largest. Okay, uh, how else can we show this? Now, uh, we can show this as well in the space C star divided by N as a function of the savings propensity. So steady state consumption uh, as a function of this, I don't like this how this looks. Do that again. C star divided by N. Steady state consumption as a function of the savings rate uh, is well decreasing to the left of less of k uh, uh, sorry increasing to the left of k star and decreasing to the right of k star how can we make that clear let me see if i can do that in a diagram here imagine that we have a, we have a steady state down here so that we have a different s that we'll call S1 F of K down here. Now at this point, the the slope here, the marginal product of capital is actually larger than the depreciation rate. You see that, which means that uh, the, the distance here is not maximized, but if we move towards the right from this point, the distance will become larger. So from the blue arrow to the optimal arrow here, the, the maximum distance, the distance increases, which means that there is a point here where we have S star and we're to the left of it, well, if we increase the savings rate, let me draw it in blue, if we increase the savings rate from below S star, steady state per uh, capita consumption will rise. So that's the relevant metric. On the other hand, if we're uh, moving from here towards the right, well, then you see that uh, we have a steady state here. And at this steady state, S2, F of K, the distance between these shrinks so that con steady state consumption per capita falls as we're moving rightwards, as we're moving, as we're increasing the savings propensity uh, from the right uh, to the right of K star, which really here should be designated as well with S star. So we have this uh, quadratic relationship here, this inverted U, which means that there exists uh, an optimal level of savings that provides the highest possible level of uh, steady state consumption per capita, and that is what we call golden rule growth. That is the magical golden rule growth. Now, uh, let's just flip back to uh, our first slide here. That is part answer to uh, this question here, what are the sources of growth? So we have a candidate capital accumulation which is not strong over long periods of time because of the, the issue of decreasing returns to scale. 
we have a candidate uh, technology, which ultimately is the answer in the next chapter. And uh, we have a candidate increasing the savings rate, which provides temporary uh, increases in the growth rate uh, as you approach the new steady state, but uh, can lead to reductions in uh, consumption per capita if you're, if you're already at the steady state.